Hello and welcome back to EU4. I'm Count Christo and this is Prussian Pride and hopefully this will be the second and final part of the War of the Protestant League, what was in reality a 30 years war. May it turn out to be substantially shorter in this little alternative reality that we're making here. Uh, how long has it been going so far? A mere four years and we're already pushing out major players like Poland and Hungary looks pretty close as well. Burgundy's under threat, but once we go and support them, I think that should be okay. Our manpower situation is becoming increasingly dire. Uh, I think maybe the, the states could help out? No, not for quite a while. That's uh, because I, I recall I used this, yeah, not for 17 years on that one, unfortunately. Uh, oops, go there and there. <clears throat> Good, you're not going anywhere, you can go up there. Yeah, Poland's very close. We're, we're mass sieging them at this point. They're getting... Uh, getting pretty crushed to tell you the truth yep more more occupations uh, you can go do that one you can just merge in here same with you go up to Minsk nice 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 yeah these guys unfortunately will never be able to get to join because the war started more than uh, 30 years ago you can go there no can't reach those ones yet fair enough you guys can all join up here over in Minsk then I'll send you over to Minsk as well. Oh, no, it looks like someone else is managing Minsk. You lot can come down here then. Shall I finish these sieges? How good a peace deal could I get right now? 74 war score should be pretty good. About no money. No humiliate. No, they won't even take that. Wow, are those two worth 62? Oh no, that's humiliate and land. Right, so no humiliate, I could get plenty of war reps. But I would like the Humiliate. I think I'm going to push them all the way over. There's the core on Hessen. Very nice. These two sieges are so close, after all. It's worth waiting for them. And yeah, n no one except Burgundy and France have taken a single hit so far in this war in terms of being sieged. Which is, frankly, very surprising. Ahem. <clears throat> Okay, I'm going to put these guys back out to sea now that we've killed the uh, people that were threatening this uh, this ocean. Ocean? Sea. North Sea, not North Ocean. <laughs> let's go to... let's get steps. S -s -s Zeps, I think. I mean, I have no idea, so I'm just guessing, but... <laughs> looks like Zeps, which is a gold mine, so we definitely want that sieged all for ourselves. Now you can split up, send half there and half there, and you can come down here and support the Siege of Hungary, which is the next target to knock out. How about that? 92? 91, sorry? Not quite. Ooh, that's not quite enough to siege that. Why not? It's level 2, 6,000. That should be enough. Maybe they have an idea that increases the uh, number of people in their forts. No? I'm surprised. I don't know why that's not working. Right, let's come down here. Poland is at 95. Yes, they will now accept it. And a bit more... no. Yep, that looks doable. Yoink. I shall uh, core them. Nice. No conversions. Estates demand control of provinces. The clergy. But of course, clergy, you can have that province. And in fact, I'm going to do some little uh, revoke shuffles. Take Ireland off them. Give them back that one. Take Marienburg off them. Give them Rethel. Uh, any more high? Yes, this one down here would be good. Take that one off them. Oh, give them nothing. Take that one off them. Give them Mepin. Any more for any more? Yes, of course, over in the uh, west. Give that one. It's useful to do this shuffle, because I just gained, you know, about a province worth of autonomy. It's nothing to, uh, to sniff at. Burgers, I'll revoke that from them, because it's not a trade important one. And that one. In fact, I'll revoke all the Burgers land. While they're not loyal, you don't want them to have a land anyway. Nobility, uh, you're a bit high anyway. Oh, that's interesting. The Prussian government only requires them to have 10% each. Oh, that's powerful. I hadn't realized that. That's, uh, that's quite a significant improvement over most government forms. Most, most normal monarchies, that is, which require them to have 15%. Uh, Okay, so there goes Poland, with a nice little expansion to Prussia up there. We're using this war to its fullest, aren't we? We're really milking it. It's uh, it's very good. <laughs> very good feeling. 
Hessen's been converted for us. Oh, that's convenient. Oh, we've taken over a, uh, a center of reformation. I hadn't noticed that. That's cool. That's nice. Uh, makes sense, you know. We've conquered a conquered a Protestant one. Oh, Rigor has been uh, full sieged by someone. Very good work of them. Force religion. Take all their money. I'm not planning on taking religious ideas, which is why I'm happy to uh, force religions. Uh, normally I wouldn't do that, because I'd normally take religious to give me the CB, but I've decided we're going humanist this campaign, and uh, it's a little bit of a waste if you're not doing like a really big world conquesty thing to take both religious and humanist. Looks like we've eclipsed Denmark. Unfortunate that we didn't rival Austria before this war, but nothing we can do about it now. Okay, good. We've got steps, which is going to produce a load of uh, gold for us if I just stop looting it like a fool. <coughs> Okay, I'd like... Uh, oh, yes, that's what I want to do. I want to bump our militarism like crazy. There we go. What? 10% extra discipline. Huzzah. And we're still loads of time ahead. Okay, so that's pretty awesome. We're now on 122% discipline. Excellent. Let's get uh, our best siege leader on the case down there. And this guy can uh, siege all these for us. This guy can come and support our siege up here. Nice. Looking good. Wow, Ragusa, I'm really impressed with you. I really am. <laughs> They've done very well out of their alliance. They're, they're, I mean, this is like not quite player level quality play from Ragusa, but close. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Unfortunately, we can't reinforce that. But it looks like our allies are on the case. Come on, get in there. Get in there. Yes, they're taking. Yes, we won it. Excellent. What's our war score from battles looking like these days? 40%. We've maxed out the war score from battles. We almost outnumber them 2 to 1. Excellent. Excellent, excellent news. This is going very well. Oh, hey, we did get the occupation of Ostmark. Nice. Okay, it's time to start moving on uh, on Austria, I think. Our, uh, our allies have been doing some sieges down here. France and... Uh, Burgundy alike, both liberating their places. It's amazing, this France-Burgundy alliance. It's very odd. Very, very rare. I don't think I've ever seen a France-Burgundy alliance, in fact. It's funny, you, you probably know this already if you're, a, if you're a veteran EU4 player, but don't you always find yourself kind of exploring, finding these weird new alliances that you've never seen before and being like, oh, what's this? <laughs> you know, it's independent Ragusa or something like that. It's always fun, that, about the game. You constantly feel like you're kind of discovering these strange new little countries. I always enjoy that. Of course, they're not new countries. They're countries that have been around for the whole time, but they're, they're just weird to see them survive. It's like when we found Granada earlier. Where are you going? Steer mark. Let's make sure we have prevent a strong, unified front against the Austrian threat. Send in our six shock to make our cannons worth more. Oh, look at that. That is a big, fat stack. They're going in and just butchered them. Okay, there goes Hungary. Uh, ooh, they've, uh, they've stopped retreating already. They must have manually retreated. But I don't really want to push much more there. So let's just put our guy up here, ready for deployment wherever. Actually, let's put him... He's got the great siege leader. Let's put him on Wien. V Sorry, that's Vienna, isn't it? <coughs> ooh, he might be getting our dynasty. That would be very nice. Didn't you get our dynasty? No, you very, very nearly did. You did, didn't you? Yeah. What was I just thinking about checking? Not the war. Not the empire. <coughs> I can't remember. Never mind. Uh, there's too many others here. Leave. Let me do it. Good. Ooh, yes. The Livonian Order. More than happy to let you out for a small price of all your land. Give me that, yeah, how about these? No, how about that? Yep, how about that? Now this one's a risky one, but I'm going to do it anyway. Because most of those countries, like I say, are still at war with us. Force religion, break your alliances. Great. Yoink, more land for the land god. Great. We're really blobbing in this war. It's fantastic. It's like having imperialism early. Imperialism, if you don't know, is a, uh, a late game CB that you get in kind of about 1720, maybe 1700. Oh, yes, that's what I was thinking. We should piece these guys out. 
I think I might leave him actually. I think I might use the actual end of the war. Take some land off of you. Maybe like that. After I've let the war, uh, the what's it called? Aggressive expansion tick down. Or I could piece you out now. Oh, they're my rival. Yeah, I have to separately piece them. I could do this right now. And then, once I finish beating up Austria, have another war almost immediately after this on Hungary. But I would really like that gold mine. This is really risky. But I'm, again, I'm still at war with most of those people. You know what? When you're allied to France and, Brit uh, and Burgundy and Russia and Sweden, you can afford to take risks. Humiliate. Give me the land. Kill your alliances. That'll do. Nice. Hungary's no longer valid. <laughs> That's what I thought. How dare you claim to be on the same tier as mighty Prussia. And this is good as well, because it would let them implode to rebels if we'd uh, left as it was. Ooh, that's not great. We can't reinforce very quickly, but we've got lots of friends nearby. Ooh, we really can't reinforce very quickly. I'm just hoping my friends will be able to hold out. I'm going to shift to consolidate. Oh, yeah. The presence of my friends scared them off. Let's shift our focus north a bit so we don't... Uh, what? You shouldn't be able to convert that quickly after you've been force converted. That's insane. Ooh, big battle over here. Get everyone in there. We should win it, because they're taking a crossing penalty. Or some kind of penalty. Yeah, crossing. Look at that patchwork. Yeah, glorious victory. Triple the casualties on their side. Very nice. Very nice indeed. Right. Uh, you and the one go there. You can go here. Ooh, apparently we're killing someone up here. Nice. You two can join up. Glorious. Great success. Okay, almost taken Vienna. How close are we to just religious supremacy? Minus 10. We've almost won already. Great. So when we win this, by the way, we're going to get a triggered modifier down here called the Protestant Empire, which gives us all those things. Yearly legitimacy, tolerance of the true faith, missionary strength, and imperial authority growth modifier. That's two. You get that. Anyone who's Protestant and uh, gets this modifier, which is pretty awesome. I think you also have to be in Europe, actually, though it's not showing up on that list. Sometimes the location ones don't show up on the lists of uh, requirements and modifiers, though. Saxon separatists. Hmm, that's not great. Hopefully our allies will take care of them. <coughs> Uh, yes, and of course, also it switches this to uh, Protestant is now the official faith, which means that only Protestants can be electors or emperors. So the electors are going to become Trier, it's in proof relations with Trier, Saxony, proof relations with them, the Palatinate, proof relations with them, and Bohemia. Those are going to be all the electors. So what we should really do right now is pick which of those we want our allies to be. Probably Trier, Saxony, Palatinate. Not Bohemia. We still want to kill Bohemia because they hold this uh, this land, which is clearly rightfully ours. I don't really want to help in that fight because they're taking a negative two crossing penalty. So I think I'll just let all my allies throw their lives at it. They are still going to win, though. Yeah, I should go in just for the prestige. Oh, too late. Never mind. Right, let's... Should I push the siege to Tyrol? No, that seems a bit risky. Let's hold back. Almost got Vienna. Be a glorious day when Vienna falls. Ooh, a civil war. That. I happen to know where that is. That's South America. That's a long way for us to be able to see. Interesting. Well, ooh, 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 interesting. How do you feel about Prussian colonialism? If we peace out Spain. We could, if we separately peace Spain, we could take, like, all of this. <laughs> that would be pretty fun. What do you think? Shall we bother? It'll cost us, but there won't be an opportunity again like this for a long while where we can this significantly crush Spain. I think we should do it. Let's do it. We're going to redeploy our troops over here, and we're going to go and take out Spain. And we're going to steal all of them. And I'm going to show you the trick that I like to use for conquering the New World. Uh, it's very simple. Don't core anything, ever. 
Uh, I hate coring in the New World. I do not like colonial nations. I much preferred the game before they were in it, and I continue to prefer it in the uh, the way that I play, which is without colonial nations. So what you do is you take all this land that they've colonized, and it doesn't give you any overextension, because the land that has been colonized gives no overextension. So you take all this land, and you don't core it, which means you never get a colonial nation, which means you get 100% of the... Um, uh, the tax that comes from it, you get 100% of all the trade, you get 100% of all the production, you get 100% of all the manpower, and it can still go down to 75% autonomy. Right? So it can still go, call for peace, are you kidding? The war is not won. The war is very much ongoing. Um, yeah, so you get all of the, the benefits of the land, even without the core, and no disbenefits. There's literally no reason to call land that grants no overextension, uh, unless you wanted to put it in a state. Support that down there. Yeah, so there's literally no reason to do it. Savoy is probably someone that we can piece out as well. Yeah, so we're going to um, we're going to have a new world uh, little adventure. And take a bunch of land off Spain. That sounds like great fun. We've won the siege of Rosilion. I believe it's something like that. Rosilion looks like it. The O is like it's in like in Lyon. So I assume it's said something like that. Although of course it's. Uh, Spanish, although the French the French at this point in history would disagree and say no, it's probably French. <laughs> at least I think they would. Three ten there, let's go and support that. Is this our yeah, that's our god siege leader, so he'll be useful in there. We've got enough money to pay off our loan? No. Four hundred ducats to pay off the loan. Let's have him come down here. This guy can advance on Valencia. I'm more confident about that pronunciation. The other good thing about this is every time we separate piece someone, it'll reset the um, core for piece timer. So it's up to 0 0.05 now. Very shortly, uh, when we piece someone out, say, we get the early piece out Savoy maybe, or something like that. Who else have we got left, really? Not many. Switzerland can be pieced out fairly easily. But we're focusing on our uh, colonial ambitions right now. It's costing us a lot of diplo points, by the way, This uh, all this separate piecing. But I think it's worth it because we're getting a lot of land out of it. Looks like this war isn't going to end this episode, I'm afraid. Or maybe you like that. Maybe you like huge wars, I don't know. In the game. I'd hope you don't like huge wars in real life. That would make you a bit of a sadist. <laughs> Not a sadist. What's the term? Someone that enjoys... What is the term? Psychopath? There's another term, though, isn't there? Not psychopath, but... Something else. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Claims fabricated by Lithuania. Does that mean Lithuania is independent? So how on earth did they fabricate a claim? No, the Ottomans rivaled us. That's a shame. Oh well. We'll crush through here and then we'll have to go and take the city. Got to own Constantinople by the end of the campaign, of course. I'm not one of those EU4 players that needs to be like, oh, we've got to remove kebab. I don't really particularly care if, uh, if the Ottomans exist at the end of the game. But I do like always taking Constantinople. If it's the city of the world's desire, I mean... I better have it, right? No, Portugal. <laughs> Stop bouncing around. We all know you're not going to do it. And if you do do it, we're going to kill you. We can have four leaders, can't we? Yeah. Oh, he's a great leader. He's a great leader. Check him out. 4342. Four, he's very good. Pleased with him. You can go and kill the uh, men up there in Asturias. Have you got any siege pips? Yeah, have you? Yeah, better ones. <coughs> I do like this mass siege of uh, of Spain. Well, that's cool. Our truce with uh, Bohemia has ended. So the moment this war ends, we can go and kill Bohemia. That'll work pretty well. Very nice. Oh, excellent. I can pay off this uh, loan. We're probably getting a decent amount of money out of this place by now. Yeah, not too bad. Five a year. It's increasing. It's increasing. Once its uh, loot bar comes all the way back, we're going to make some serious dough out of that province. Right. Uh... Incorruptible. Death to spies. Death to spies indeed. Monster separatists. Hmm, that's not great. Could someone else go and deal with them, please? I'm, uh, I'm a bit busy in Spain. What I should probably do is spend one stack up to deal with the uh, separatists, because we're having some more separatists soon, aren't we? Yeah, the Saxons. Although, if I finish all these cores before they fire, we might manage to avoid them. With a little bit of luck. Uh, what are we up to? Ooh, quite a bit of war of uh, exhaustion is piling in now. Although our uh, our optimism and our government form also oh our government form reduces it. 
as I say, I've never played as Prussia before since the patch, so let's bump that again. I'm not going to waste it though. Ooh. Burgundy has to, uh, Netherlands have declared independence. Oh, I hate the Netherlands with an absolute burning passion. I detest the Netherlands. So uh, I'm going to accept. Uh, England has allied themselves to the Netherlands. That's hilarious. So France and um, England have both got this event, which is say, hey, we must aid the Netherlands. And so they've gone, okay, yes, we'll aid the Netherlands. And so England's allied themselves to the Netherlands. But England is allied with the uh, country that the Netherlands are at war with in another war. And the Burgundy is already at war with Spain and you can't be at war with the same country twice. So both those, the Netherlands have like sent out these these messages going, please join us in our war. And uh, the people have been like, yes, absolutely. We will join you in your righteous struggle against the uh, the Burgundian oppressors. And, <laughs> and then the guys, the, a couple of years later, you know, Netherlands going to be like, guys, guys, you said you were going to help. So, oh, well, you know, technical difficulties. There's nothing we could do. <laughs> I do find that quite funny. Was that not clear? I think I think that was probably clear from the fact that I laughed. I don't know why I felt the need to say it as well. It's going to be a three-part war, I think. So next time we'll uh, we'll finish crushing Spain. We'll uh, actually get the uh, religious supremacy declared, and we'll uh, tend to our new colonies down in Brazil, which would be great. But until then, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.